TypeScript is a collection of tools that build on JavaScript and add syntax for types. Developed primarily by Microsoft, TypeScript aims to make JavaScript type safe, despite JavaScript's dynamically typed nature. It achieves this through a JavaScript compiler and an excellent language server, allowing developers to be more confident about data types in code for both the web and the server. This video is a blitz through TypeScript's type system for existing JavaScript devs. We're not going to be covering any JavaScript features, so if you're not yet familiar with JS, go and watch my JavaScript for Impatient Devs video and report back. The link is in the description. With that in mind, let's get going. Get started by installing the TypeScript compiler, TSC, in your JavaScript project with your favorite package manager. Create a TypeScript config file by running tsc init at the root of your project. This will create the default tsconfig.json file, which tells the compiler how to behave. Commonly changed options include the JavaScript version you'd like to target, module resolution rules, and how strict you'd like the TypeScript compiler to be. I generally recommend being as strict as possible. TypeScript is supported by default in VS Code, Z, and all JetBrains editors. Otherwise, install the TypeScript language server in your favorite text editor. Create your first TypeScript file using the .ts extension. Declare a regular JavaScript variable, but don't initialize it with a value. If you hover the symbol, you'll see that the variable has been given the any type. TypeScript's primitive types include the seven JavaScript primitive types, string, number, big int, boolean, symbol, null, and undefined. However, TypeScript also introduces a few new basic types, including any, which can represent any other type. It's generally recommended that you avoid using any where possible, and TypeScript will warn when a variable implicitly has the any type. Give your variable an explicit type using a type annotation. TypeScript will now prevent you assigning a value of an incorrect type to that variable. Variable types can also be inferred from a literal. Create an array type by following the type with a pair of empty square brackets. To convert your TypeScript files to JavaScript that you can run in the browser, use TSC followed by the file or directory you'd like to compile. The exact output will depend on your tsconfig file. Add type annotations to function parameters to limit what can be passed into a function. Use a colon to specify the function's return type if desired. TypeScript can often infer function return types, but you may wish to specify them to ensure future Future development can't break the contract you define. Create a function type using the arrow syntax. This can be used to type const functions. Use unknown as a safe alternative to any. An unknown variable can hold any value, but requires type checking before you can access its properties or methods. The never type represents values that never occur. Use it for functions that never return, like those that always throw errors or use infinite loops. Define an enum using the enum keyword. Enums can hold numeric or string values and will default to sequential integers. If you use computed members for a numeric enum, you must specify initializers for every member. String enums have to be constant initialized with a literal or another string enum member. Enums can also be heterogeneous with both number and string values. Enums are one of the only TypeScript constructs which have a runtime implication, and I would generally avoid using them. There are better alternatives, which we will see later. Define a tuple type with square bracket. Tuples are a fixed size and have known types at each index. You can also spread both array and tuple types using the spread syntax. This can be used to create array types with a minimum number of members. Array and tuple types can be made read-only using the the read-only keyword. If you'd like to reuse the type, use the type keyword to create a type alias. These are compile time only and do not exist at runtime. Create literal types by defining a type with a literal rather than a type name. Follow a JavaScript literal with as const to have TypeScript infer a literal type. Define an object type by constructing an object where the property values are types. You can define nested object types. Define required methods either by using the function type syntax on a property name or with the alternative method syntax shown here. Use a question mark after the property name to define an optional property. Optional properties can be the specified type or undefined, and literals can ignore them entirely. You can also use the spread syntax on object types to use properties of one type in another. You may also define object types using the interface keyword. The key difference is that interfaces will automatically merge. One interface can extend another using the extends keyword. If you have two interfaces in the same scope with the same name, that name will refer to a combination of the two interfaces. This can be a footgun at times, so use the type keyword unless you explicitly require an interface and the spread syntax isn't suitable. TypeScript also also adds modifiers to class properties. Use public to define a property or method as public, meaning it can be accessed by code in other scopes. The private modifier allows access within the same class, whereas protected allows access within the same class and any of its subclasses. Use the pipe operator to create a union type. Values belonging to a union type can be one of any type in the union. You can use a union of literal type to create a convenient string enum that will have autocomplete. If you have a union of object types with similar keys, the exact union member will be determined from the values of those keys. The never type will be ignored in a union. Intersection types represent the combination of two or more types. For example, the intersection of two object types will contain the keys from both types. The intersection of two unions will only contain the values that appear in both unions. If a value can be one of multiple types, we can use type narrowing to figure out what type it is. Use the type of keyword to check the primitive type of a value. TypeScript can then determine the type of the value in that scope. Similarly, 
TypeScript can infer the type of the value once that scope ends, if there is no way for a value of that type to still exist, for example, if you've returned from the function. TypeScript will do what is called control flow analysis. Similarly, TypeScript can use truthiness narrowing to determine the variant of a union, or to narrow down a union if any other types coerce to false. If two values have overlapping unions, then if those values are equal, they must have a type in the overlap. Use the in keyword to check for the presence of a property on any value. TypeScript can use this information to narrow the type further. The instance of keyword can be used to narrow types based on their class or superclass. This will return true if the check type is in the prototype chain of the value. Sometimes, TypeScript is not totally able to infer the correct type, and we the programmers know there is logic elsewhere that determines the type of a value. In this case, use the as keyword to force the type of a value. If there is no overlap between TypeScript's infer type and the type you specify, you will get an error. In this case, use as to coerce the type to unknown first, as unknown coerces to any value. We can use this to create a user defined type guard using a type predicate. If a function checks the value of a type, for example, by checking whether a known property exists on a type and returns a boolean, we can use that as a type guard. Use the is keyword in the function return type to define the type predicate. When this function is called, TypeScript can narrow down the type. You can use this is type on a class method to narrow the type of a class. And if you're sick of hearing the word type so much, imagine how I feel saying it. That's definitely worth a subscribe, right? In a similar vein are assertion functions. These are functions that throw an error if a value is not of a type. Use the asserts keyword in the return type to define an assertion function. If you've exhausted all possibilities of a type, TypeScript will use the never type to represent a state that doesn't exist. Use the key of operator to create a union type of all the possible keys of an object. Keys can be strings, numbers, or symbols. The type of keyword returns the type of a given value. This is useful with literal types and as const for defining enums based on runtime values. Use a combination of key of and type of to get a union of keys of an object. You can then access this object at runtime, creating a very powerful enum system. This is generally recommended over the enum keyword mentioned earlier. Use square brackets to index a type by a property name. This can get the type of a value from an object or the type of a member of an array or tuple. Use a union type as an index to return a union of the types of the values of all the keys in the union. Primitive types like string, number, and symbol are technically unions of all possible values. For example, use number as an index for a tuple to retrieve a union of all the possible members. Combine key of with type indexing to retrieve the types of every possible value of an object's keys. Create a generic type using angle brackets after the type name. These contain the type parameters. Use the extends keyword to apply constraints to the type that may be used. Types may be constrained by previous type parameters, allowing useful constructs like accepting an object type and then requiring one of its keys. Specify a default type with an equal sign. Use a generic type by passing a type argument to the generic type constructor. You can also create generic interfaces and classes in this way. Type parameters for classes are accessible anywhere within the scope of the class. Create a generic function by specifying the type parameters before the function parameters. Type parameters may then be used as function parameter types or as the function return type. When calling a generic function, TypeScript will do its best to infer the type arguments, so you may not always need to specify them. Utility types are generic types that apply logic to their type arguments to create a new type. You can think of them as functions for types. TypeScript has a number of built-in utility types like pick, which creates a new object type from an existing one, including only the keys specified, or omit, which does the opposite. Take a look at the TypeScript docs for more built-in utility types. Use a ternary-like syntax with the extends keyword to create a conditional type. This will return the first type if the condition is met, or the second if not. Applying a conditional type to a union will apply the condition to every member of the union. You can't have a union containing never, so returning a never from a conditional type will remove that member from the union. Use a generic conditional type with a union to narrow a union to meet a condition. Use this to create your own utility types. Create a template literal type using similar syntax to a template literal string. This will create a union of all possible strings that match the pattern. Use a type mapping to create an object type from its desired keys. Square brackets around an index type, like so, will create an object type that can have any key which extends the type specified. If you have an existing type union, use the in keyword to map over the union and create an object with those union members as keys. Combine this with a generic type and the key of operator to create a utility type that maps an existing type and applies some logic to its value types. Make a key read-only using the read-only modifier or use a question mark to make it optional. Prefixing either of these with a minus sign will remove it from the key if it's already present. Combine a map type with the as keyword to remap a key to be a new type. This can be used with template literal types 
use to rename the keys, for example. You can filter out keys using never. A TypeScript decorator is a function used to annotate a class, class method, property, parameter, or accessor. The decorator will receive the object being decorated as an argument and will run once at the time the object definition is first initialized. If a class or method decorator has a return value, it will replace the value being decorated. For example, this code decorates a method with code that logs the start and end time of the function. Decorators are a little complex and behave differently depending on what you're decorating. Check out the TypeScript docs for more information. Migrating to TypeScript is fairly straightforward. It can be done incrementally by simply changing the file extension of JavaScript files in your project. Many JavaScript libraries already ship with type definitions via .d.ts files, which are type declaration files, and add types to an ambient namespace. See the TypeScript docs for more information on namespaces. If a library doesn't ship with type definitions, you may find third-party type definitions in the at types organization on npm. Check out the definitely type project on GitHub for more information. TypeScript is very useful and can lead to some excellent developer experiences. It can sometimes be difficult to maintain types though, so try not to get too complex. And if you've got to the end of this video and decided you never want to touch JavaScript or TypeScript again, fair enough. You might enjoy this video here on HTMX.